Black Ribbon Day is, is, is very, very important. And if you, under, if you are following world events, which I know you all are, because you're engaged in, in democracy, freedom, rule of law across the globe, is uh, when the molotov ribbentrop secret agreement was signed, uh, you know, we've been hearkening on the fact when we thought there was a new era that there should be an acceptance and recognition by the Russians on this deal. And so what did we hear just recently? We hear Putin saying it was a good deal. That kind of tells you the world in which we live in, which is a scary world. That's why you have to continue to tell the stories of the past. The, um, you know, I serve one, there's a lot of reasons why I bring personal passion. Many of us bring personal passions to these debates and these discussions. I'm fourth generation Lithuanian American. I didn't, my, my family didn't free, flee, well, you could say the Russian czarist regime, but I think the first Lithuanian migration was more economic migration. Having said that, I served on the West German border for three years as an army infantry officer. Uh, which is, is another reason why we need to continue to tell the stories of the past, because I'm very aghast, frustrated, and angered at our Western European allies who will not provide, I would say, the safety and the assurance and the commitment that we did for Western Europe. And I did with three years of my life. Um, three great years, don't get me wrong. Uh, years that I was proud to wear the, the uniform of the United States, proud that I was standing on the, on, on the, on the border between freedom and to totalitarianism. I just wish uh, what someone had coined the old Europe um, would provide the same strength and support to the, you know, the, in essence, the new Europe, which are their free Eastern European countries that now long to be part of the European community. And, and Dennis did a great job talking about those countries now who are in the forefront of this battle. Because do we really want a return of many of these stories? I like, when I come speak at these events, I like to tell my own stories. I like to read these accounts. And they're just horrible. They just, you just cringe. As we see ISIS lopping off heads, we don't think that we could ever return to a time where there'd be that 3 a.m. knock on the door and the order to gather one suitcase and leave your home. Most people thinking never to return. Many did not. Really, do we want to return to a world in which that occurs? We may be seeing a return to that. So, so what you're doing here is continuing to tell the story uh, of the past so that we dare not repeat that in the future. Uh, we will do our best to try, try to raise this issue to the public policy leaders in, in the highest levels of our government. But, but I'll tell you that the best folks to knock the heads of politicians are you? Are you going to those members' offices and say, we are going down another terrible path that we don't want to repeat? Please remember the, the, the faults and failures of our past, and let's stand for freedom and democracy. Let's stand for the rule of law. And let's be prepared to pay the cost. Because if we don't pay the early cost, the, the cost of not being engaged are exponentially larger. Not just in personal lives and tragedies, and you guys will go through that again. And I, This book, I had, Jim Goldenstein does my foreign affairs stuff, and I said, I got all these books, give me these books, and this is the one, Lithuanians in the Arctic. I mean, split the family, move, displace them to north of the Arctic Circle. It's, so keep doing what you're doing. I'm honored to be part of the team. Count on me when you need me. You know, may God bless you all. May God bless the United States of America. May God bless the international community that yearns and continues to yearn to be free. Thank you. Thank you.